Good evening, everyone. It's good to be in the Lord's house on this Sunday evening. Amen. Amen. I say a big welcome out there to everybody out there uh, watching on Facebook Live, listening on Eternal Broadcasting. Good to have you guys joining us for our Sunday evening service here tonight. We want to start off with our precept for this week, which we have, I believe, comes from Psalms chapter number 37 and verse number 34, where the Bible says, Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. That sounds like one of them old-fashioned verses right there. You ever heard what goes around comes around? That's kind of what that Bible verse sounds like right there. If you keep the Lord's way, good things are going to come to you. If you act up, watch out. Everybody's going to see what happens from you. So let's just remember that verse. Let's, let's live according to that. Keep God's will. I'd like to welcome all, any visitors we have tonight. Good to have you guys here with us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before we go any further. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day and thank you for all your blessings, for your love and your mercy, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we're free to gather together here tonight, Lord. We also thank you, Lord, that we have the good health to be here, Lord. Let's never take these two things for granted, Lord. We pray for those, Lord, who are, who are sick at home, Lord. Just um, look after them, place your hands upon them, Lord. Heal them, Lord, because we love to see our, our numbers growing each and every week, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you meet here with us tonight, Lord. Speak to every heart that's in attendance that hears the message, Lord. If someone hears the word of God tonight that doesn't know Christ as their Savior, Lord, I pray that the gospel will have its intended effect on their heart tonight. They'll come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you be with all the prayer lists that were given out before the service, Lord. We pray for um, Connie Wiles, who's in the hospital, that you just reach down and be with that situation, Lord. Touch her body. Be with Carol Tickle who's um, recovering from surgery and um, recovering from Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever as well. Lord, just be with her, Lord, in both the recovery processes. Be with Scooter Barton, who is possible to have cancer, Lord. If that be so, Lord, we pray, Lord, you'll just touch her body, Lord, and remove every cell of cancer from them. We pray for Amy Graft, and you know the situation there, Lord. Be with every aspect of her health and her health care. We uplift Joyce Earp and Audrey Hoskins and Bonnie Range. Just touch these ladies, Lord, and heal them. Um, be with Scott Dean's father, Lord, who's recovering from a fall, who also has COVID, Lord. Just remove the COVID from him, Lord, and help him recover from the fall. Be with Steve Dominski, Lord. We pray for Taylor Adelman, for Stan Moorfield, who's going to have an upcoming procedure. Let that go flawlessly, we pray. Be with Brother Wes Underwood, heal his ankle. Mike Smith, who's recovering from a fall. Gary Solomon and his unspoken. unspoken. Aaron Prophet, Lord, you know the need there. And we also uplift the uh, families of Jimmy Pruitt, the family of Wayne Lee, the family of Pat Haymore, and the family of Brad Campbell. Lord, we ask, Lord, at their time of loss, Lord, that you make yourself real in a way, Lord, that only you can, Lord. Just reach down, Lord. Let your love be known to them, Lord. Just um, help everybody around them, Lord. Just minister to them, Lord, and be a blessing to them in this time of need, Lord. Once again, Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for loving us, Lord. And we ask you once again to meet here with us in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, now it's time we're to open with a song. I'll ask if you will uh, grab your hymnal and stand to your feet. And as you do, turn to number 331. We'll sing the first, second, and last verse of Where He Leads I'll Go. 331. Let's all stand. Take up thy cross and follow me. I heard my master say. Wherever 
he leads, I'll go. Wherever he leads, I'll go. I'll follow my Christ who loves me so. Wherever he leads, I'll go. Thank you. You may be seated. All right, before we go any further, we have a few announcements to take care of right here. Don't forget, August the 2nd, I believe that's this coming Sunday, um, Evangelist Buster Kinsey is going to be here with us, both service, 11 a.m. and the 6 p.m. service. Looking forward to that, be in prayer about that. We want the Lord to show up along with Brother Kinsey. Don't forget about Tuesday Bible studies at 11 a.m. If you're not doing anything on Tuesday, you should have something to do. You should make your way out. Have a good time of fellowship and study in uh, Romans chapter number 12, Tuesday at 11 a.m. I know the pastor and everybody who normally attends would be great. We'd uh, look forward to having you with them. Believers Bible Institute is going to be starting up Thursday, August the 20th. If you want to... Um, sign up and get started with it or the study in the book of Genesis if you've already uh, graduated this past semester I'm the man to see about that you can come talk to me I'll let you know uh, anything you need to know also if I haven't talked to you tonight and you had told me before that you wanted to start the Genesis study or sign up um, I kind of misplaced my list so if you could just get back with me so I can get my list and we can get everything organized that's my fault I told the pastor I was gonna have to follow my own sword up here for losing my list but if you could just get back with me so we can get everything underway for that um, so uh, a couple other things coming up don't forget hands of glory um, August the 16th we'll be presenting not uh, not who I once was and of course if you have met Jesus that's true about you amen and don't forget going to uh, Saunders brother off flea market the um, 14th you want to sign up see that uh, see Miss Janice Hodges. She'll be glad to hook you up with any information you need about that and be more than happy to sign you up. And with that, I'm going to ask you to grab those hymnals one more time. Stand to your feet. As you do, turn number 323. Same as the last one. First, second, and last verse of More About Jesus. 323. More about Jesus would I know Well, as we come to our portion of the offering, just want to remind everybody once again about our box in the back if you're here. Um, if you're online, you can also do it uh, a couple different ways. You can actually mail it to um, Temple Lake Baptist Church, P.O. Box 10004, Danville, Virginia 24543, or you can go to our website at strengthnumber4today.com. We have a ties and offering button there that you can click on to. It takes you to our safe and secure website where you can use your credit card or debit card to do that. I do have one quick announcement um, our lawn crew would just like to know 
who got our weed eater and just bring it back, please. Um, it's not like, well, we don't think anybody stole it or anything. We think somebody just put it in the wrong spot or took it home with them. If you did, great, just bring it back and um, no questions asked, just bring it back. Full of gas, please, definitely that. So. But anyway, if, please do that and um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bless the offering and I believe that Miss Elizabeth, I don't see her here, but she's probably in the back practicing or she's ran away scared, I'm not sure. She's supposed to be singing, so I'm gonna go ahead and pray. I thank you, Evan, for going to find her, so. I'll give it a few minutes. Uh, I don't want to pray that long. So. <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege and opportunity to be in your house once again. We just thank you, God, for the many blessings you bestow upon each one of us. We just ask, God, that you would just uh, take the offering that we give you, Lord, and just uh, to bless it enormously. We just ask that it would just always go to further your kingdom. We ask you to be with our special singing tonight. We ask you to be with our pastor, give him the words that we need to hear to help strengthen and encourage us to be the lights that we need to be in this lost and dark world. We thank you, for Lord, for everything you do and all these things, Lord, we ask and thank in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, so she appeared out of nowhere, Miss Elizabeth, come on up.
Let's take your Bibles as we continue what we started last Sunday night. Our Christians are not anarchists. We talked last Sunday night about all souls matter. Anarchy is a state of madness. We defined anarchy as a state of disorder due to the absence of non-recognition of authority. That's where they want to get this world to, to the point where there's no authority. I was reading Fox News this afternoon, and Antifa has now got a list of businesses that they're going to attack. And folks, that's just gone too far. It's gone too far. Uh, when you can't run your business in America without being attacked, there's a problem. And an anarchist is someone who tries to bring about a state of anarchy, a state of lawlessness, and that's where we are. Now tonight, I want to start talking about authority stabilizes men. Authority is necessary. God has ordained authority. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Are you with me there, Ken? Okay. I exhort you, I encourage you, therefore, that first of all, supplications and prayers and intercessions and giving of thanks be made for two words. We ought to respect all human life, period. Race is not an issue for the Christian. It's not an issue. All souls need to be saved. All souls need to come to Christ. Verse 2. For kings and for all that are in what? Authority. Pray for those in authority. Please pray for our governor. <laughs> Please pray for him. Pray, please pray for our General Assembly and our uh, State Senate and our Congress and our President. We need to pray because that's where the work is done. It's not done protesting. You're not going to get anywhere protesting. But you get down on your knees before God and you pray and something will happen. Say amen. amen. Prayer for kings, for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. How in the world do you get quiet and peaceable out of breaking windows and turning businesses down and burning things up? It's not there. Christians ought to never be a part of anything of that nature. If prayer can't do it, we can't get it done. That's what we've got to believe. If prayer cannot make it happen, we cannot get it done. Then it says, in all godliness and honesty, we want to project the character of Christ. We want to be little Jesuses. Amen? That's how we want to live. For this, verse 3, is good and acceptable in the sight of God and our Savior. Folks, I want to tell you, judgment day is coming. For the Christian, it'll happen seven years earlier than it will for the lost man. Well, a thousand seven years for a lost man. Of course, when the lost man dies, judgment starts instantly when he wakes up in hell. Amen? Being in torments. But the judgment when he stands before God's a thousand seven years away. But judgment day is coming. And they can deny God exists all they want to. They can deny that his word is true all they want to. That doesn't change the fact that God is God. And his word is true. Amen? We believe that. Who will have all men to be saved. God didn't want anybody to go to hell. And come to the knowledge of the truth. That's where the problem lies today. What is truth? Men want to deny this book. They want to deny the word of God. And that's their privilege. But they better remember one thing. They'll be judged by the word of God in the end of time. They will stand before God and they will be judged by the words that are out of this book. That's why I want to know every word in that book. I want to be ready for judgment day, don't you? I want to be ready to stand before the Lord. 1 Peter 2.17 Honor all men. That means you don't kill anybody. I don't care what race they are. I don't care what they've done. You don't kill anybody. You don't hurt anybody. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Christians ought to love each other. 
There should be no schism in the body. We should love each other, pray for each other. Hey, look, people are not going to make you happy. People are not going to always do things the way you want them to do things. I mean, God, Paul had a thorn in the flesh. Y'all remember the Bible talking about Paul had a thorn in the flesh? I got one too. His name is Sean Horbit. He's my thorn in the flesh. And I don't think the Lord's going to take him away anytime soon. And there's times I love him to death, and there's times I just have to love him. Amen. I just have to love him. But folks, we love each other. Love covers a multitude of, so we should never be angry with each other. We ought to turn everything over to the Lord. We as the church, we love, we care, and we minister. That's our job. We understand that all power, all government, is ordained of God. That's scriptural. There's no debate to that question. All authority is ordained by, do what authority tells you to do, they will answer to him. That's our premise. And when you weaken authority, you go back to an uncivilized society where almost no one survives. If there's no authority, if there's no government, if there's no police, no one's going to survive. We go back to the days of the judges when men did that which was right in their own eyes. I, I tell you, I love gun smoke, but it tears my nerves up when they start killing each other, taking law into their own hands, because it's not right. Life is precious. Isn't it precious to you? Aren't you glad you're alive tonight? My life's precious to me. I want to live as long as I can on this earth. I want to do as much as I can for God while I'm here. Folks, the goal of the devil himself is anarchy. It's how it will get him into power during the tribulation. When, and I said this last week, I'll say it again this week in, in introduction. When anarchists win, they lose. They want total freedom, but when you get to the end of anarchy, there's a police state. There's dictatorship. You lose everything. So they do all that disruption only to end in the worst state than they were in before they started. Go down to some of these Central American countries. They'll tell you anarchy is not all it's made out to be. It doesn't work out like they think it could work out because it's wrong. God has ordained human conscience. Okay, let's talk about that for a minute. God has ordained human conscience to restrict and restrain people from sin. Your conscience is formed by your mama and your daddy. That could be good, it could be bad, but it's a fact. Your conscience is molded by your mama and your daddy and your family and who you're raised around. It is important to have a home, a godly home with a mama and a daddy, a male and a female, that love God and love each other, and love their children, and raise them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's how a conscience is formed. So, if you have a conscience, it's built to restrict and restrain people from sin. You teach your children when they're young, no. And you punish them when you're young to train them not to do this and not to do that or to do this or to do that. To form a conscience so that when they go out in the world, they have some boundaries to keep them from going over the edge. Thank God for a good mom and daddy who gave us a good conscience. Amen? Who taught us right from wrong. And they taught us, here's point number two, moral law. There is no, where, where there's no moral law, the conscience has no idea how to react, so it naturally goes rogue. It naturally goes rogue. So you have rules, and you have regulations, so that your conscience, when you're a child, they taught you to obey the law, do what you're told. So when you grow older, you learn the laws, and then you stay within that moral law. You go to church to learn God's moral law, amen? 
these groups that are forming in these Antifas and all these groups, they have no moral law. Their moral law is wickedness, according to the Word of God. We'll talk more about that a little later. But human conscience is formed when you're a child. Moral law you have when you're an adult to keep you within bounds so you don't go rogue and go wild and just do anything your mind wants you to do. But he's ordained a family and its rod of authority to restrict people from sin. The family is an important element in teaching your children right from wrong. But the one thing that has been torn apart in the last 50 years in the United States of America is the home. The devil has destroyed the home. And that is his plot and his plan. And we as the children of God, we can't do anything about the world. <clears throat> but we can do something about our families. We got to determine to build a good family that teaches our children right from wrong and obeying the Lord and living for him. Where there's no family unit, <clears throat> there's no rod or authority to draw the lines and boundaries to guide these children so they too do not go rogue. Parents, I, we, we live next door. <clears throat> I got that frog Eileen had this morning. When I was young, my mama knew when we got up, when we went to bed, and everything we did in between. She ordered our days, our nights, our school, our every, she was in control. We were under the Gestapo. She was under control. Our next door neighbors, their daddy was a drunk. He worked in a barber shop. <laughs> and he used to have all these big bottles of tonic behind his barber thing, and you thought it was tonic for your head, no, it was for your stomach. It was vodka he had done colored and put in these bottles because I watched him one day. I worked at the laundromat down below him. And I was looking around the corner. He grabbed that tonic bottle, turned up. I said, that ain't hair tonic. If it is, if it is he's in bad shape. That's all I can tell you. He's drinking tonic. He's in, he needs something bad. But he stayed drunk all the time. Mama had to work two jobs day and night to pay bills. They had seven children. Mom and daddy had to work day and night. Mama did, Daddy didn't, he stayed drunk all the time. Those kids had no, no guidance in their life whatsoever. None. The little boy, when he was three years old, was running up down the road in a diaper that he wore all day long. It got changed once a day. Now we go back and we look at how these kids turned out, and it's sad. It's sad. It's heartbreaking. And they did the things they did because they were never taught any better. They just went rogue. And they did whatever they wanted to, whenever they wanted to. And everybody thought, man, them kids has got it made. They don't have nobody telling them what to do. You're a good kid. Thank you. I don't know who your mom and daddy is, but it, but it can't be a tickle. That's all I can tell you. It can't be a tickle because that's too good. Thank you. But we all thought they had it made because nobody ever told them what to do, when to do it, when to go to bed. We had to go to bed at 9 o'clock. Next door neighbor kids were roaming the yards at 9 o'clock. And it's just sad to see how their lives turned out. But I learned I had a good mom and daddy. And their rules were good rules. Say amen, parents. Amen. Say amen, teenagers in the back row. Oh, I was low, but I got it. Say amen. Thank the Lord for that. I learned that my next door neighbors didn't have it made. I'll never forget. Many a night we'd get up. The next morning, my living room would have four or five kids sleeping in the living room floor. Because my mama let them come stay with her because the daddy run them out the house with a butcher knife in the middle of the night. You better thank God for a good mom and daddy. Thank God for good parents. Thank God for a good family. If there's no training for children, then there's a potential for a generation of criminals. Do you know what you're watching on TV in Chicago and Portland and Seattle? A generation of criminals. That's what we're seeing. A generation of criminals. 
Now, we don't have the best state in the world, but bless God, we ain't got the worst one. Amen. Thank God none of that's going on in our state. Say amen. amen. But folks, if there's no rules or regulations, people go rogue and they become criminals. Where you weaken the power of the police, you do arrive at the door of anarchy. And all hell breaks loose. And that's what's going on in our country. Preacher, what are we supposed to do? we got 100 days to pray, pray, pray. That's all I can tell you. Because I'm going to tell you something. This country could blow up if things don't stay the way they are. This country could blow up. I'm being honest with you. If these liberals get their way, this will be everyday life, living in anarchy. I don't know about you, I don't want to live that way. I want to live where I can trust the police, where I can trust my leaders. Even though I may not have voted for them, I want to be able to trust them. Say amen. amen. I don't want people telling the federal government to back off when their buildings are burning. Something's wrong with a leader that does that. A leader that'll even sit down with Antifa. They shouldn't be a leader, period. Shouldn't even be in office. Now, folks, Romans chapter 13. When you see a riot, you see the human heart without controls that God has placed. That's what a riot is. When you see a riot, you're seeing a place where God is nowhere near, that God has no control. Romans 13, 1. Let every soul be subject unto higher powers. For there's no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. This is plain scripture. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that do resist shall receive to themselves, look at that word, damnation. They think they're getting away with it. They're not getting away with it. Somewhere down the road, it's going to come back and bite them. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. But when they die without Christ, then it'll be damnation. And see, they don't want you preaching the gospel anymore. They don't want you to preach the Bible anymore because that upsets their apple cart. And they can't take being, take being told no. That's the problem in America. We need to learn to take no for an answer. My mama, I thought that was the only word she knew. No. No. I grew up thinking my name was No Yancey. I did. No. No. We got to learn sometimes no is not a bad answer. Sometimes it's a good answer. For rulers are not a terror to good works. Good works are what we should be working for, not bad works. Not rioting, not anarchy. But to evil. Rules stop evil things from happening. <coughs> wilt thou not be a, uh, 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 wilt thou then not be afraid of po the power? Do that which is what? How is rioting good? How is fighting good? It's not. You, in no way, shape, or form can you even call it good. For if thou do that which is what? Evil. Be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God. It's not talking about the sword of the, or the cut. It's talking about the word of God. The word of God's going to be true and every man's going to be a liar. This is clear. This is plain. A revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore you must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but for conscience sake. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I can lay my head on the pillow at night knowing I haven't done anybody wrong. If you, get, if you can do that, you can go to bed with a conscience, a good clear conscience. But people who kill other people and laugh about it, they have no conscience, has not been developed, has not been made, 
and they will suffer the consequences of not having a conscience. We as loving Christians do not have riots. We don't form revolutions. That's not only in government, that's also in the church. We don't have revolutions and riots in the church. The devil's in that kind of stuff. We lovingly, kindly, mercifully care for people every day regardless of the circumstances around us, we care for each other. We show them the very love of God that Jesus Christ and the mercy that Jesus Christ has shown me and you. Social justice is just a fancy name for disrupting society. So when you hear social justice, it's not a good word. It's a bad two-word phrase. It's bad. It breaks down the institutions of government, school. Let me ask you, you know, have you ever stopped to think about what happens on these college campuses when the college students start protesting the faculty? Not my thing. Just use your head for just a minute. Here's those who come to be taught because they don't know. Telling those who do know what they don't know. <laughs> I mean, it, it has never made sense. Rioting and protesting in schools. I mean, that's the inmates are running the asylum when that takes place. And that's what's happening in America. Those who don't know nothing are telling those who do know to get out the way and let them do what they want to do. But us who know the Word of God knows it doesn't turn out well for those who live that way. It always ends up in damnation. You see it in universities, you see it in, in schools, and now we're seeing it everywhere. The premise is insane. When things like this happen, the tail is wagging the dog. That is not how we as Christians behave ourselves. Our God is sovereign, and we believe that. And if you don't know what the word sovereign means, that means he knows it all, he controls it all, and he can do what he wants to. I believe that, don't you? I don't have to protest. All I got to do is pray. All I got to do is trust God. Because my God is sovereign. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that. They said, we, we're not crazy in answering you this way. Our God is sovereign. And he's going to take care of us. And you know what God did? He went in the fire with them. Old Darius. I believe it was Darius. I forgot my facts right. He didn't want to throw Daniel in prison. He did not want to do it, but he had to because he signed the law. But old Daniel had the best night's nice sleep he ever had. Fairy pillows everywhere. <laughs> Purring pussycats to sleep on. Say amen or me. Now, I was a boy, I had a, a cat named Tom. And old Tom was a big old yellow cat. And that thing, at night, Mama would go to bed and I'd come in from working at the laundromat and old Tom be at the window. Meow. And I'd go to the door and I'd say, be quiet, Tom. And me and Tom would go to bed and old Tom lay upside my head and purr me to sleep at night. <laughs> old Tom was soft. He slept between me and my brother and we both slept good and if it was cold, we slept warm. Say amen. <laughs> hey, old Daniel had a sovereign God who heard and answered his prayer and put them puss cats to sleep. And he filled their bellies with nothing. Think about that. They didn't feed them, them lions anything. They wanted them to swallow Daniel whole, and they didn't eat a thing. They had the holy belly ache. Had the holy belly ache. Because their God was sovereign. Our God rules the world. Our God has called us to be known by our love, not by our an antagonism. Our God, our God is in control, and we need to trust and obey him no matter the environment. Love has to be shown in those who are hurting, those who are depressed and mistreated. And it's a true fact, people do get mistreated in this world. Of all races, get mistreated. And they should be loved and comforted. Amen? They should be. Now folks, 
We just said social justice was an aim for disrupting society, but it's complete social disruption. If this anarchy continues, we're going to end up in a police state, and that's what they want to do anyway. They want to tell us like little soldiers when to get up, when to go to bed, and what to do. That's what all this is about. That's what all this is about. It's leading to the last days. And folks, if this anarchy continues, we're going to end up in a police state, and that's not good because it ends up in dictatorship. Your freedoms are completely gone. Then the army that used to control its own citizens, I mean rather protected their own citizens, had gone from protecting their own citizens from the outside enemy to controlling their citizens. That's what's happening. The army is not there to control you, it's there to protect you. But they're trying to turn it around on us the other way because of anarchy. You say, preacher, sounds like we can't win for losing. That's exactly what I'm telling you. They told us 65 years ago, Russia said, we'll take over America and never fire a shot. Now, when Reagan come along, we thought, oh, that'll never happen now, and we went to sleep. And we've elected two presidents who had a cultural agenda, and they've pushed it to the nth degree. And that's why we are where we are. We've arrived at a society that is a, it's all about culture, not about Christ. They said, we're going to change the culture, and that's what they're doing. They're trying to stop us from, when Obama stood up and said that we weren't a Christian nation anymore, he was, I didn't like what he said, but he was probably right. Because they destroyed our culture. And we'll talk about that in just a second. The nation that falls from within, that's the goal of the enemy, to get the nation to fall from within. Now, acts of sympathy, are these acts of sympathy or are they Marxism? Number four, there's no doubt there are a lot of injustices in this world. It's everywhere because the devil and his demons are everywhere. Stirring the pot, trying to keep things in confusion. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians that the devil is the author of confusion. That's what the devil wants. No group, no one group of people have a corner on injustice. No one person has a corner on injustice. It, sh it falls upon all of us at some time. Let's be clear. Black lives do matter. And let's even be clear. All lives do matter. There are those who suffered injustice and deserve our prayers and support through their time of suffering and not being treated fairly. You'd have to put your head in the sand to say that there aren't people in America who are not prejudiced because there are. It was wrong in the slave day of slavery and it's still wrong today. All people are created equal. Amen? That's what the Bible teaches. Suffering is unfortunate, but it's real. And it deserves our sympathy, it deserves our prayers, our mercy, and they truly have been done wrong and served in injustice. But the question is today, what do you and I do? How do we react to the injustices we see? Do we join out of sympathy or compassion? Can we join these groups and express love and worship and obedience to God? Whatever you do for God, has to reflect God's character and God's values and be under God's umbrella of authority. That's how you judge what you can be a part of and what you can't be a part of. And I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm going to prove to you tonight that these social groups going on today, we should have no part of them. No part of them. Not because we don't care about people who have done wrong, but we can't support people who support things that God says are wrong. That's the key here. It's the underlying principles that they're not telling you out loud that's scary. Let's look at what some of these groups really are doing beyond their phony cover of compassion and their phony sympathy for justice and injustice in America. These groups are disruptive. 
They're rebellious, whether it's Antifa or any of these other groups. They are radical, they are anti-authority, they're Marxist, and they're atheistic. There's the key. These groups will tell you, go to their websites, read what they stand for. They are atheistic. They are not in any way in congruence with the church. All you got to do is go to the internet and you look this up. Let me give you a couple of principles that this group, the Black Lives Matters, have put on their website. First of all, Black Lives Matter in transgender affirming. We make space for transgender siblings. We do the work required to dismantle psi gender, which is to do undo biological sex. In other words, they're for sex changes. That's what they're for. To uplift transgender black folk, especially transgender black women, who continue to be disproportionately impacted by trans antagonistic violence. Now, I don't care who you are, nobody should beat you up. Sinner, save like, it's wrong. But we cannot support a group of people who support undoing what God has done. That's a fact, folks. Deuteronomy 22.5. Folks, this is some tough scripture, and, and it's not going to bother you, but I may be dead tomorrow, and if I am, you know why. Somebody doesn't come after me. But here's what the Bible says. Deuteronomy 22, 5. The woman, oh, this is tough, but it's true. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Isn't that what it says? Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. That's what the Bible says. For all that do so, <laughs> well, I got in trouble a while back for saying this word, but be careful. For all that do so are an abomination to the Lord. If a boy puts on a dress, honey, he's an abomination. If a woman dresses like a man, she's an abomination. Because God made me a man and made you whatever sex you were born for a purpose. And for you to change that purpose is to deny the fact that God is sovereign. Now, am I right or wrong? The Bible's clear. Transgenderism is an abomination to God. And, and now in schools in Virginia, you can't say anything or you'll go to jail. Folks, we're letting, we, we better stand up. I'm not here to hurt people who feel that way. I'm just here trying to help them realize they're wrong. If they'll listen, it'll help them. If they don't listen, that's their choice, and they'll have to deal with the common consequences later. I'm not here to straighten anybody out. I just want to be able to tell the truth. Amen? I just want to be able to tell the truth. Here's what Black Lives Matter says about uh, uh, women. We are womanist rather than feminist. We build a space that affirms black women that is free from sexism, misogyny, and environmentalist, uh, environments where men are centered. Now, folks, <laughs> like it or lump it, the Bible will be true and every man be, every man be a liar. Amen. There's a great misunderstanding in the world today. Men are not given authority because they're better than women. God gave man the authority as a punishment for freely partaking of the fruit of the tree. The woman, Eve, was tricked. So man was judged with leadership. If leadership's done right, there ain't nothing good about it. It's a lot of hard work. It's a labor of what? Love, not control or dictatorship. And God protected women by throwing that burden on the men. But somehow through the ages, and I'll be honest with you, part of the reason is because men took what God said the wrong way. Let me tell you something. A man who thinks a woman's less than a man is stupid. Ladies, you better say amen right there. Amen. Hey, man and woman stand on the same floor by the cross just like men and women stand on the same floor. Folks, when we get to, and men ain't going to like this, ladies. You better get in here with me. 
During the millennium, women's coming back. Say amen, ladies. And if you don't straighten up, you might be working for them during the millennium. I think about that a whole lot. If God puts me in the kitchen with Beverly and she's the boss, I'm asking for a transfer. Say amen or amen. <laughs> Robert says, no, let her, let her run the show. She'll do a good job. But folks, look, we've got this thing twisted. If things are done right, a man doesn't lord over a woman. He leads her because he loves her. Amen? It's, it's wicked men to twist this thing and, and sit women. I, I mean, I watch some of these old TV programs, and they say some things make my hair curl. I thought, how'd they get away with saying that? If they'd have said that today, they'd have been killed on the spot, and, and, and rightfully so, because they put women down. No, God just said, man, you take the responsibility and love the woman and carry the load for her. Say amen, ladies. That's what this means. And, and folks, the Bible says 1 Corinthians 11, 3, but I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. If you go to the Old Testament, now can I blow your mind for just a minute and talk some deep stuff here? In the Old Testament, when God created woman, the word created was bana. It means that he took his time and he worked at it, and he created something beautiful. That's the word used for woman. Say amen, ladies. Now, it's a totally different word when God said he created Adam. Do you know what word he used when he said about Adam? Yep, sir. And it means he threw it together. <laughs> Come on, ladies, help me out here. When he made a woman, he said, a, a bond, uh, yeah. He made a man, he said, yeah, sir, get on down the road. Just threw him together. But that ought to tell you ladies where God stands with women and say amen. God's not a male chauvinist. God told man to take care of women and to love them and make it easy for them. And the Bible says in Ephesians 5, 21, submitting yourselves one, two, in other words, you work together. A marriage is not 50-50. It's 100, 100. And you better give 100. Say amen. But I promise you this. If a husband gives 100, the wife's automatically going to give 100. If the wife gives 100, the man's going to give 100. Because that breeds love in a relationship. 50-50 or 75-25 breeds hatred, distrust. Amen? But you do it God's way, it works out fine. Works good. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves and your own husbands as unto the Lord. Loving a loving relationship, not a dictatorship. Loving him because you want to, not because you have to. For the husband is the head of the wife, and is Christ is the head of the church and savior of the body. You see, Jesus had to die for the church. You know what God told the husbands? Now, ladies, help me here. Die for it if you have to. That's your wife. That means go the extra mile. I can see I'm going to get it when I get home. I ain't going to be able to get away with nothing. She's going to pull all this scripture out on me and say, she'll be going across the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear it now. <laughs> and I'm going to say, boy, I'm about to try to calm her down. Amen, boy. <laughs> but you do it God's way and it works. You do it man's way and it falls apart. Amen. For the husband is the head of the wife, and is Christ is the head of the church, is Savior of the body. Therefore the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be their own husbands and everything. Loving because you want to. And working together because you want to. Not because you have to. When God's in the midst, it runs like a, a, a top. And then the Bible says, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be their own husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives. I double ding doc dare, dare you ladies, you better get with me on this one. You can't show me in the King James Bible where it says a wife ought to love a husband. <laughs> it ain't in there. <laughs> but you know what's in there? Husbands. Oh, I'm going to get you in a minute. 
I'm going to get you, and man, you should have heist your mouth. Now you done made yourself a target, and I'm going to put a Scud missile on you. It's done left the, the, the pack. It'll hit you in just a minute, so just hang loose. Now, where was I before he run his mouth? Uh, husbands, love your wives. That's a command of Almighty God. Because God knows that if a man really loves his wife, like he's supposed to, she'll automatically love him. Amen. She won't have to love him. She'll love him. If he's given 100%, God made her so she'll give 100%. You're standing side by side, arm in arm, walking together down the road of life. One's not in front of the other, the other behind the other. You're walking side by side. That's the way God made it to work. And if men, Mr. Tickle, submit to their wives in love and honor, they will love and honor you back. No questions asked. Amen? Say it won't too bad. Didn't hurt you too bad. Y'all pray for Mike. Okay. <laughs> One last thing and I'll let you go. Here's what Black Lives Matters say in their website. And I'm reading this verbatim, okay? We are queer affirming. We gather to free ourselves from the tight grip of the belief that all are heterosexuals. Now folks, we can't support something like that. Why? Because of Leviticus 18.22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Leviticus 20, 13. If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an and they shall surely be put to death and their blood shall be upon them. Now we know that's Old Testament law. We're in the age of grace. We don't kill people today. That's not what we do. But God said it's an abomination for a man to lay with a man or a woman to lay with a woman. It's an abomination. I lied to you one more. We're intentionally amplifying, this is what Black Lives Matter says. We're intentionally amplifying the particular experience of violence that the black, queer, transgender, non-conforming woman and intersex people face. And there will be no liberation for the black people if we don't fight for these people. I have one problem with that. I don't think anybody should beat anybody up. I don't care what their sin is. That's wrong. It's dead wrong. I'm not going to, don't, I don't approve of that. I don't agree with it at all. If somebody wants to live a wicked lifestyle, their sin will find them out. We don't have to judge them for that. Their sin will find them out. I'm trying to get them away from their sin so it won't find them out. Say amen. That's all I'm trying to do. But folks, the problem I have with what this says, is you are born with the color of your skin. And all men are created equal. But I don't care what you say or what doctor says it, you are not born a homosexual or a lesbian. It's a learned thing. It's a sin. It's a sin. So there's a big difference here in doctrine. That's my point. We must stand on the doctrine of the Word of God. Say amen. Listen, I'm all for protecting injustice and people who've been done wrong and loving them, having sympathy for them, and supporting them. But I cannot stand when you cross the Word of God. I can't be a part of that. Can't be a part of it. I'll read one verse and we'll quit. For you're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you have been baptized unto Christ, put on Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek in the church. There's neither bond nor free in the church. There's neither male nor female in the church. For they are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to what? The promise. We don't need Black Lives Matter. You know what we need? We don't need Antifa. We need the church to step up and be the church. 
That's what we need today. We need the church to step up and be loving. We wouldn't need all these crazy groups running around doing crazy things if we, as Christians, would stand on the word and just love people. What's happened in our club? The church has got a bad name because people want to run around and be judges. You can't show me in your King James Bible where any of us are judges. We're all servants. And when you go around pointing your finger at other people and pointing a finger rather than lending a hand, that's when lost people miss the message of mercy. And they miss the message of grace. But you see, I know a lot of people who are in an alternate lifestyle. And I don't stick my nose up at them and I don't avoid them and I don't walk away from them. I try to show them the love of God and share the gospel with them every time I can. I know people who support abortion, but I don't hate them. I try to tell them about Jesus so they'll find Christ and stop doing that. Amen? I know a lot of people drink alcohol. And I'm a teetotaler. I don't believe in drinking at all. But I know some people who are alcoholics, but I, I try to love them and tell them about Jesus. I don't try to point my finger at them, put them down, tell them how sorry they are. I try to tell them how good Jesus is and how he can change their life. Am I right tonight? That the church would just be the church. A lot of these other groups wouldn't be doing the stuff they're doing, but we have dropped the ball. We've become the church of entertainment. We've become the church of materialism. Health, wealth, prosperity. I said I was going to quit, and I am, but I'm going to say this. Health, wealth, prosperity focuses on you. Am I right? Evangelism focuses on the world. Our churches are dying because we become these churches like California. They took the steeple off. They took the pulpit out. They've done away with the altar. They don't have invitations anymore. They sing seven, eleven songs, seven verses, the same thing eleven times. They got 50 minutes of singing and five minutes of preaching. That's not going to change a lost world. We need to pray. Amen? Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed. First of all tonight, if you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, every head's bowed, every eye's closed. It's a serious time. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says very clearly, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then Romans 10, 9 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Maybe you're here tonight and you've never trusted Christ, and you say, Preacher, I need Jesus. My life's in a mess, and I'm headed to damnation unless somebody rescues me. And I believe Jesus died to rescue me, and I need rescuing. If that's your case, people are praying for you right now. If you'll pray this prayer silently while I pray it aloud, mean it from your heart to God's ears, He'll save you tonight. He'll change you from the inside out. He'll make you a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you need to be saved tonight, pray this prayer silently while I pray it out loud. Say, dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, but I believe Jesus died to pay a debt of sin that I could not pay. I believe he was buried to give me forgiveness I so desperately need and want. And I believe he rose from the grave to give me eternal life. And I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven with Jesus. The best I know how, I turn from sin to the Savior. And I ask Jesus to save me right now, and I trust him as my Savior. Save me, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. 
Now help me serve you the rest of my days. Now with every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. You prayed that prayer and you asked Christ to save you. I'll not come to you. I'll not embarrass you. I'll not call you by name, but I'll pray for you. Would you slip your hand up tonight and say, Pastor, pray for me. I just asked Jesus to save me, and I want to live for him. Would you slip your hand up so I can remember you in prayer tonight? Anyone that way? Just slip it up, slip it down very quickly. If you buy a way of internet, and you ask Christ to save you, go to our contact page on www.strengthnumber4today.com. And on that web page, leave us your name and address. We'd love to give you a Bible and some books on how to get started. Help you find a good Bible to believe in church, be baptized, and start being the Christian and living for Christ. Please let us know you accepted Christ as your Savior. That's our hope and our prayer. Now tonight, Christian, let's decide we're going to start being praying Christians. We're going to be passionate Christians. And we're going to reach out with the gospel to people. We're not going to be judges, we're going to be servants. If God spoke to your heart tonight about what God needs you to do to be a better soul winner and a better servant for God, Jamie's going to play a song and just say, do business with God. We can't do a regular invitation because of COVID. But right in your seat, do business with God tonight and let him know you heard him tonight and you're answering him in prayer. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed as Jamie begins that song. Let's do business with God. motive in mind just want to thank you for the other times I just came to talk with you Lord maybe tomorrow there'll be trouble
just came to talk.